court. The citizens of the state of Alabama. Right now, we rank at the bottom. Quality of life, standard of living, education, health care. A lot of issues that others in the, around the country and around the world use to demean, talk down on people from Alabama. We have the fifth highest incarceration rate in the world. In the world. Fifth highest incarceration rate in the world. Uh, we invest over half a billion dollars. Over $500 million is invested in the prison system. Over 60% of the people who come through this system reoffend or are back incarcerated within three years of their release. It is a system that is based on criminality, promoting crime, developing criminal cultures and ways of thinking. under the facade, under the illusion of corrections. So if it's a Department of Corrections, it's not working. The governor says that he wants $800 million to build some more of these ineffective institutions, and he wants you to pay for it. Philadelphia is building a 4,500-man prison for $400 million. Okay? So, I want to ask the question, how is it? Or is it true? Is it true what they say about us? Will we spend... $1.5 billion to build something, a Department of Corrections that will have a 60% failure rate within the first three years. Or is it true that these prisons are working the way that they were intended? Sean King put out audio talking about this, saying that this is the way this shit is supposed to work. It's a reason why I'm in a solitary confinement cell right now, and they tell me I can't have a book. It's against the rules for me to have a book. I don't know how long I'll be here. The people in solitary confinement are people who they say are problems, poor decisions. But while we're here, we can't get nothing to improve our decision making. It's people in solitary confinement can't read and write. They can't even sign up for a GED class. This is the time to reach out to these people. But their rules say no. No education, no books, no newspapers, no magazine. Well, I got 15 days solitary confinement. But I've been this is I'm I'm approaching 60 days in there. So what is it about this system that is worth investing over a billion dollars more in? It is because these systems are functionaries under the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for crime. This is for enslavement, voluntary servitude, to make us property of the state. And we produce everything. We produce cleaning supplies. We fix office furniture. We fix all the cars. We fix free services. We run farms. We do the tags. We do recycling. We clean up the roads. We do garbage. We work sanitation. They lock us up and make us a workforce and tell y'all that the reason why they can't afford to let us back out is because we violent predators, we gang members, we all these different things. But what they don't tell you is 
whatever the issue is that we have, they don't have nothing in here to fix it. They don't have the infrastructure to solve problems inside their prison system. They want us here to continue to engage in the same criminal thinking, the same problems that brought us here. You can't go to school, but you can go to work. You can't get a book, but you can get a knife and you can get all the drugs you want. You can get whatever you want in this prison system, except for education, except for rehabilitation. I ain't talking about what they got on paper. I'm talking about the reality on the ground. You got a, a 2,000 man maximum security prison and you got a school with less than 50 people enrolled in it. So on paper, they offer you education. You got a trade school with less than 150 people in it. All total, you have the capacity and space for less than 10% of your total population to go to school. But coming through Kirby, your testing shows that 80% of all the people who enter the prison system are functionally illiterate, without skills. And so the governor and his cronies and the criminals that he rolled with, they want this money. They want these, these billions. They want to build these slaughterhouses. We all know who they gonna put in them. The melanated one, the black man. And we know what they gonna do to us when they get us there to make us compliant, to make us obedient, to break us, to make us get up and answer work call, to make us produce this free labor. We know what they gonna do. And we know when we file complaints or when we file lawsuits, we know what the system that is complicit or part of the conspiracy. We know what they're going to do. If ever there was an enterprise that was guilty of RICO crimes, it's the prison system. Racketeering influence corrupt organizations. That's the Alabama Department of Corrections. That's the United States Justice System. That's the DAs and the judges and the prosecutors and the police who fabricate and lie and, and embed their own immunity into the law. The judges say, okay, well, the prosecutors have immunity. So the prosecutor said, well, you give us immunity, then we won't prosecute you when you violate. We'll just say you got immunity too. So everyone is immune. That's part of the system. And the police, they commit their killings. And then when they get to the grand jury, it's read. Oh, it's secrecy. No one can know who's on the grand jury. The prosecutor's in there presenting the police officer's defense. Better than any defense attorney ever could. Corruption, racketeering, all for money, all for the continued enslavement of black, low income, brown, poor whites. The top of the list, blacks. This is what that money is for. If you don't believe me, do your research. Look at the movie. The documentary 13. Read the book, The New Jim Crow. Slavery by another name. Worse than slavery. Dark Alliance. Read. Research. McDonald's. Wendy's. Victoria's Secret. John Deere. AT&T call centers. Verizon call centers. All in prison. They rather for that, the industry to be in prison instead of in the community. Put these jobs in the community, people won't commit crimes. 
but you take the jobs and the factories from the communities and put your drugs and guns in the communities. And then use your music, your TV, your radio, your books to promote crime, criminal mindset, influence the youth, build a culture of criminal thinking, and then castrate and, and demonize the people who are victims of this well-orchestrated scheme so that you can justify mass incarcerating us. And then when we get us here, you say, okay, well, this is the reason why we have to treat them this way. But it was all with the divine scheme from the beginning to get that free labor, to remove us from society, put us in prisons, put us on these farms, put us in these warehouses, put us in these factories, and then sell us to the highest bid of human trafficking. Sell us to McDonald's to make their uniforms and have burgers. Sell us to Whole Foods to make their specialty cheeses. Sell us to AT&T and Verizon to work their call centers. Put these jobs in the community. Put these resources in the community. But you don't want to pay us minimum wage. So you put it in prison and you make your deals with the politicians and they pass laws to say, yes, you can open a factory in prison. We want this percentage for our property, our human property, our chattel, our niggas, our slaves. Free Alabama.